shoot through five zombies in one go? Of course you can. Bam. Look at that. All of them. Okay, they didn't all die, but at least they shot through, as you could see. Want to do maximum damage for un unarmored targets? Of course you do. Want to make sure you wipe out a horde? Naturally. Bam. All dead. So welcome friends, hope you're going to enjoy this guide to the different ammo types that we have in 7 days to die alpha 18. And I hope I earned you a subscription. And yes, I know it's boring to hear when YouTubers say that and I do apologize. 90% of the people watching my videos actually are not subscribers. So if even half the people watched subscribed, I would be at 25 to 30,000 subscribers up for my 5,000. So if you do like this guide, please do subscribe and catch my other videos. And of course, I stream on weekends on Saturdays around 11 a.m. EST every week. Come join me at twitch.tv slash 42 But let's get started on this mess. So, ammunition is a little bit tougher in Alpha 18 than it used to be in previous versions. And you'll see here, I have a bunch of crafting materials and I have a bunch of different ammo types. So I'm going to go through some of them, uh, starting with bows. We're going to transition into Magnum ammo go into the 762 we're going to skip the 9 millimeter because that works exactly the same we're also going to look at shotgun slugs breaching slugs and of course the rocket ammo and we're going to take a very quick look at the blunderbuss ammo that is not really that interesting but it's good to know about so let's start with the blunderbuss because that's the easiest one to make now we have the blunderbuss ammo it only takes that and has 11 damage per pound not too bad also has 8 pounds, so if all of them hit, it's going to be almost 90 damage. And of course, this is uh, before modified with whatever the blunderbuss quality is. I think it's 8 times 16. But if you look at the ammo, you also see it's got a 40% target armor, which means that it's going to be mitigated by that. And if the target has a lot of armor, well, it means you're not going to do a lot of damage. But still, as an early game in the face, bam, you'll kill him. It's just really slow to fire. But we don't really care about that one anymore because, well... That one is kind of boring. No, okay, let me not. Let's not get rid of all here. You know, I don't want people to complain. I'm littering. So let's get on to bows. And I'm going to look at the crossbow. Normal bows work uh, pretty much exactly the same. There is some difference that I'm going to highlight. So the first thing you have is the stone arrow. And if you look at the stone arrow versus the stone bolt, of course, the stone bolt is uh, slightly faster. Velocity is slightly higher, as you can see. And the range damage is also higher on the crossbow things. And that is uh, the same for all this one. If you compare here, this one is basically just better if you're using the, the crossbow. Of course, it's slightly slower to fire. And I think that's one of the big reasons why the damage is higher as well. So crossbow bolt, stone, 32 damage. Eh, it's reasonable early on. You do want to transition into the iron crossbow bolt. And of course, if you look at it, it's basically it's slightly faster, but the damage goes up. And that can be actually a pretty big difference. Now, if you go up to steel, which I generally don't very much, it's actually quite good against uh, zombies because it has higher armor. And if you notice, it also has some target penetration. And that can be really important if they have some armor. Now we get into the specialty types. We have the flaming. Flaming does regular damage, but it has a nice fire damage. So let's try that out. So we have our kind Darlene here. Let's uh, just set her on fire and let her burn. So you're going to see that it's got a 14 second duration and the total is going to be 120 damage, which means that it's 120 plus the 38 damage or whatever the crossbow is, which is 70 or because I have mods. So she dies fairly fast. And if you look at it, especially with a scope, it's actually pretty easy to shoot. And why do I mention that? If you remember in Alpha 17 and early on, we had the big issue where the flaming flaming arrow was really difficult to shoot because it was actually covering the zombie. So it was almost impossible to hit something that wasn't literally two meters in front. If it was like 10 meters, you couldn't see because this flame was covering the zombie. So no, it just, it was, it was really bad. I loved them, but it was so difficult to shoot and now with the crossbow, especially with the nice scope. Oh yeah, you can definitely get a good shot there. So let's get in zombie bow here at a distance and... Oh yeah. See? Pretty good. You could actually aim and shoot him. Not bad. Of course, I'll get some of the experience when he dies. 
a crowd favorite in Alpha 16 and 17, I guess, earlier, as soon as it was there, was the exploding crossbow bolt, which is really, really awesome. Now, it does uh, deal a lot of damage, which was really what it was used for. And it's got a reasonably okay explosion radius, and people were using it specifically at groups, and, of course, on zombie cops. So, let's see if we can get one in here. Let's, uh, ooh, looks like a dynamite stick on. Let's uh, see if we can hit them here. Let's not zoom in. And bam! They don't necessarily all die because they sort of shield themselves a little bit. But it's still a reasonably good weapon for how to craft it. I'm going to get into how to craft it in just a moment. Actually, it was not as good as I was expecting. I thought they would definitely die faster. All right, maybe it's just the angle. Let me try again from above. So I'm going to hit them here. And none of them actually died. Okay, that's... Uh, Fairly disappointing, considering they don't even have that much hit points. So, yeah, they definitely seem to have nerfed this one. I mean, Arlene has something like 125 hit points, and even a direct hit right at her feet doesn't kill her. Wow. Okay, so maybe not so good anymore in Alpha 18. All right, maybe I'll skip that one then. But how do you actually craft these things? So bolts and arrows are going to be the same. So let's look at the arrow. No, let, let's do the bolt. Now the normal stone bolt requires stone, of course, some wooden feather, and uh, it's fairly easy to make. Now as you transition to the iron, you need the iron arrowhead, which you can make in the forge, and still wood and still arrow, pretty easy. Steel. Let's do a steel bolt. And whoops, it looks like I have not unlocked that. So it requires the Guide to Archery, Volume 4. And of course, there it is, unlocked. Now the good thing about the Steel Crossbow Bolt is that you only need the Steel Arrowheads, of course, which you have to craft. But you use polymers instead of the feathers. So if you can find a lot of polymers, you can make a lot of arrows because, well, feathers can be a bit of a pain to actually get. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually craft the polymers, which is really weird because we have gas. I mean, we have oil. Why can't you make plastic when we have oil? I mean, isn't that what it's made from? But anyway, that's how you make them. Now, let's look at the other bolts. We have the flaming, which also requires the steel arrowhead. It requires the scrap polymers because it's effectively a steel arrow with the flaming bit. So it has some gunpowder, cloth, and animal fat. Not, not too bad. I think the problem that I have with this one is the animal fat because I never have enough animal fat to really mass produce things. The rest of the things you can make relatively easy, but not animal fat. Uh, I'm not sure whether they should remove this or allow you to make animal fat somehow. The exploding crossbow bolt, uh, beyond not being so good apparently, requires more gunpowder and duct tape. And again, that makes it a little bit harder to mass produce. And based on its effectiveness, as we just saw, I wouldn't recommend this one. I mean, if you find them, use them, but it doesn't really seem to be worth it. Because if you've seen my grenade guides, you'll see that those ones are a lot easier to make. Especially if you're using the pipe on, which of course you have to throw, but it does a lot of damage and you don't need the duct tape. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do ya? Okay, maybe not so lucky. So, we have the Magnum, and of course this works the same with the pistol, for instance, and hunting rifle, I'm just trying to use one of them. Now, you have the normal uh, ammo, and it has a reasonably good range damage, and, uh, you know, the normal block damage. Then you also have the hollow point, and you'll see the hollow point has a fair bit of extra damage. I think it's something like an extra... Third or something, yeah, around an extra third, so it actually is significantly more, less block damage, which doesn't really matter, but the target armor goes up, which means that if they have any armor, it's going to be really ineffective. And of course, that's why you have the armor piercing. Armor piercing has almost the same uh, damage as the hollow point, but it reduces the armor by 20%, which is really nice. It also has this nice target penetration, what does that mean? And I think this is the link to the degradation. So, what is target penetration? And, well, let's get into that. But first, let's look at how to craft them. So, let's look at Magnum. Normal Magnum is bullet tip, gunpowder, and the bullet casing. And, of course, that's unlocked by, well, the agility. And that's where you unlock your pistols. And the, the Magnum is considered a pistol. So you can craft this one. Now, armor piercing and hollow point is a little bit harder because you need to unlock it with the books. 
And for the hollow point, it's Magnum Enforcer Volume 6. For the armor piercing, it's Volume 5. So you need to find these before you can craft them. But when you can, look at uh, the crafting ingredients. It's 131 for the normal bullet. Armor piercing is 151, so it's a little bit more. So it's, uh, if you have a lot of gunpowder, it's actually fairly easy to just make this one instead. Hollow point is uh, basically doubling up the bull tips, which means that if you have a lot of lead, it's easy to make. But keep in mind, the damage against armor targets is really, really poor. Which means that normal bullet works pretty well. If I switched over to hollow point against an, un an armor target like this, it should be good. And of course this one. But in practical terms, what's the difference? So I've spawned in three zombies here and they're soldiers, so they have some armor. And let's check the difference between the armor types. I'm going to do an alley here, which shows that they have 150 hit points. So using just a normal bullet, I'm going to shoot him in the chest and down to 68. So that's 32 plus that's 82 damage. Not too bad. Let's go to hollow point. And let's shoot him in the chest as well. Oh, it's so slow to reload. Bam! You'll see it did very little damage. It did something like 28 damage as opposed to 82. Really poor because it's the hollow point and it increases the armor and he already has armor. But let's look at the armor piercing, which should, I don't think it'll kill him in one go, but it should do a lot of damage. All right, let's get a shot in the chest. You'll see down to 34, which means that it did 100 and what's that? 116 hit points in damage compared to 82 and 28. So if you're going up against armor targets, it definitely helps to use armor piercing. However, if you notice two shots of the Magnum against one of these would kill them. Same as two shots with armor piercing. So shouldn't you just use the regular one all the time? Because you're just saving crafting resources. Uh, yes and no. So let's uh, take this one out. And let's explore armor penetration a little bit. Oh, why are you still alive? Good down. So one of the new things that we have in Alpha 18 is the concept of armor. And armor piercing and penetration. So as you saw, if you look at the different rounds, they have different uh, armor. Target armor minus 20 with the armor piercing and plus 100 off the hollow point. It also has some kind of thing that called penetration and degradation. And that's related to how far it can penetrate. Under the perception skill tree and the penetrator, you also have some skills that will impact this even more. So the first level, you will ignore 10% of armor. Second one, 20%. But here's where it gets interesting. On the third one, you ignore 30%, which is, you know, just uh, more than the previous ones. But armor piercing rounds can penetrate an additional target when using hunting or marksman rifle. This one goes up to ignore 35%, but can penetrate two targets and three extra targets, which means that, well, that's a lot of extra targets. <laughs> so let's have a look at it. You'll see that I'm using the regular Magnum ammo and I'm going to just shoot straight through here. Let me just crash down so I get a chest one and I'm going to bang. Nothing happened except I did more sneak damage, but that's all right. Nothing penetrated. So with a regular round, it will never penetrate. But let's switch over to armor piercing so this one is supposed to go through one extra target so let me do this again bam and because i got the extra sneak damage i doubled the damage and it went through two of them that's pretty good isn't it now what about if i do three i mean it did talk about penetrating multiple let's try that as well bam nope it still went through only two because if you read it, it says you have to be using hunting rifles or marksman rifles. So that is the difference between using handguns and using the specific rifles, which is the hunting rifle and the marksman rifle. So here I have uh, six willing soldiers to do this testing. So I'm going to switch over to using a rifle and specifically a marksman rifle, which has more damage, of course. The ammo works the same way. Now, if I go to do the crafting, Let's say 7.62. Regular ammo can be crafted as soon as you start unlocking. But once you start going to armor piercing, it requires sniper volume 6. 
Hollow point requires sniper volume seven. So you have to go unlock that. And if you're looking at, let's say nine millimeter, you have the same kind of thing there where the regular bolts can be crafted as soon as you craft the pistol. Armor piercing requires pistol peat volume six. We have hollow point, which is pistol peat volume five. So depending on which weapon you have and which ammo it uses, you have to unlock the special ammo types through different schematics or different books. But let's look at this one. So I am now loaded with armor piercing. And let me do a fresh reload. So I got six. And if we're looking at this skill, it said it should go an extra three additional targets. So first one should be fine. Second one should be fine because I'm using the armor penetrating bullets. And then we have one, two, three. So I believe in this case, the last one is going to be just fine, unfortunately. So let's just shoot to see if we can get hit in just in the chest here. And nope, I think I might have missed the last one. Let's have a look. I only hit three here. Let me try that again. All right, I have uh, six nurses here. Maybe that'll be easier. I put them slightly closer together just to make them easier to hit. It isn't that easy, actually. And I seem to have actually hit five of them and one of them is just fine. Maybe she shifted a little bit and I went straight through the armpit here. So you see, I kill five zombies with one shot. And why is that important? Well, you can imagine that you have a corridor. Now you'll be having a lot of zombies coming through here during the whole night. And just by standing here shooting, you can actually start shooting through multiple of these ones because they'll all be going through this same corridor. Oh no, I'm beset by cheerleaders. Oh no, and they all nicely lined up. Oh, whatever should I be doing? Oh, maybe I should just be using my armor piercing bullets. And with that penetration perk, you'll see that you can quickly shoot quite a bunch of them actually. Of course, this only works with the marksman rifle and the hunting rifle. So if you want to do a lot of bullet penetration, you need to use the correct weapons. But even just using an armor piercing magnum or something will still allow you to shoot two of them in one go. And that can be really powerful when you have a lot of them coming in because you're using half the amount of bullets. So they cost a little bit more to craft, but if you shoot and kill two of them in a go, that's definitely less resources overall and a lot of experience and it keeps you safe. So armor piercing, really, really good in some situations. All right, now let's look at the shotgun. So we all know the usual shotgun shells where they do, let's say 12 per, ta uh, per pellet. They do increase the armor, so not really good against armored. A Little bit of block damage, but they don't really have a lot of effective range. And pellets, of course, eight times 12 is a lot, or I think in this case, well, it's a lot of damage because I pumped on a couple of the mods. So that's the usual one we know. And of course it works like the usual thing. Let me switch over to it. You just uh, load it up and then you shoot them. It's really good. If you're close up, especially if you have the shotgun choke, you can mow down zombies actually quite fast. So what does the slugs do? Slugs is basically one pellet while, because it's more like a normal round. It has no armor, uh, no armor bonus, so it's pretty good. It does a fairly high damage. And of course it does some block, block damage. You can shoot out windows and things like that. So let's... Uh, switch to that one the slug people use that in the previous version a lot against cops for instance if they were specking into the shotgun for instance because if you are then uh, using the shotgun with the normal shotgun shells against armored targets is not really that helpful with this one not too bad let's bring in a soldier let's not do that many let's reload as you know from previously, shooting him just with regular ammo. Let's do another soldier, actually. So let's uh, switch to regular ammo. We see he has 150 damage. Well, that's a lot of these ones, but he's got 150. So we're going to shoot him once. And he has now 70. So it did 80. Now, if we switch to the shotgun slug, shoot him as well. Bam. How much was that? Definitely more, an extra 21 damage. So the slug is definitely better against armored targets. And that can really help. And of course, if you have another weapon that you can use other armor piercing, of course, those are really good. But if you are specking into the shotgun, this is really helpful. Crafting them, well, let's go to the workbench. And let's get shotgun. And we'll see the usual shotgun shell, just regular. Once you can make the shotguns, shotgun slug, it does require unlocking, which is the shotgun messiah volume four. So 
don't have this one you're not making the slugs but what's this shotgun breaching slugs now these ones are under the shotgun messiah volume two and regular one basic takes buckshot gunpowder and paper slug takes bullet tip because it's more like a regular bullet gunpowder and scrap polymers but the shotgun breach breaching slug requires steel some soil I'm not really sure what that's for, but I'm sure that's a reason maybe to pack it on. You have the gunpowder and you have the scrap polymers and, of course, you have to unlock it. So it says it's good against door hinges or locked for quick entry. So let's try one out here. So let's switch to breaching ammo. We have we have one of these ones. We have 7,000 hit points, which is one of the vault doors. Now, if I switch to this one, did I actually switch? I did. Let's do one shot. Oh, no, I do have to reload because I didn't finish the reload. Bam. Look at that. 1800 damage or 1750. Let's do another couple. Of and three shots and we're down to here and it should be almost be down and there you go. So if you have a bunch of these ones, you can actually get through armored vault doors, armored hatches and I think even break up your safes and everything that you find around in order to loot them. Of course, they are fairly expensive to craft. As you can see from the breaching ammo, I think they're a little bit too expensive compared to, let's say, a lockpick. And lockpick. A lockpick basically is just forged iron and mechanical parts. And these ones work, well, very similar in the, in the fact that you pick the safe but if you have a bunch of resources these ones are really really good i don't think they're very good against let's see how what they do against right hold on let's see breaching slide what do they do against oh they do 80 so they're reasonably similar to yeah they're similar to the normal shotgun slugs except they're for breaching so they do you know more against the door and woods actually let's say let's get a safe let's pretend we found a safe oh no it's here whatever should i be doing and this one has five thousand so we blow it once yep it does so you can use this to blow up these ones and oh unfortunately it's empty well that's, that's a pity but it, it's a very fast way of just blowing it up and of course if you want to blow it up entirely you could do that as well oh no uh, that's interesting why is it not oh that's really interesting so once it's been broken up it really doesn't do more than the 80 damage aha interesting so you're not going to blow up the whole safe but you're going to open it up so breaching ammo breaching slugs really good for opening things up well that's nice and of course the moment you've all been waiting for looking at the rocket launcher and the ammo here and here we have two different kinds of ammo we have the high explosive which does the 420 against entities but 2500 against blocks really nice explosion radius of five and we have the the frag ones which does 650 against uh, entities but only 20 against blocks so obviously you want to get through something you use the high explosive if you want to kill zombies and not destroy your base you use the frag one if you notice this one has six blast radio so it is actually more effective against zombies than this one not just because of the ammo well the damage but also because of the explosion radius so how do you craft this one well let's start with high explosive these ones requires the rocket tip which is you get from the forge gunpowder duct tape gas can and rocket casing you also need to unlock it from either demolition expert which is uh, one of the usual perk trees and of course the rocket launcher schematic and then you can craft it now the frag one is very similar you see the only difference is it exchanges the tip for buckshot of course buckshot you also get in the forge so it also requires the same unlock demolition expert or rocket launcher schematic it's interesting that these ones are on the same which in most other cases is actually two different unlocks for these ones these one these ones but these ones are the same maybe because people don't really use them that much and what does that mean well i'm loaded in the high explosive and this is just a regular concrete 2500 so let's hit them somewhere in the middle and actually you can even put a red dot sight here or reflex sight and actually it did a little bit less i guess uh, this one took the full these ones took the splatter damage but it means that if i shoot another one it probably oh make sure i load it let's make sure we aim yep it takes out oh 
yeah, even the ground here. Let's uh, quickly patch that up so I don't get into trouble, but the more interesting it is, oh, let me go up here and get a good vantage point, is I think the frag one. So let's load in the frag, and this is good when you're having hordes because unlike the high explosive which will damage your base and maybe bring it down the frag one does not it works exactly the same way aim it in shoot it and bam look at that 16,000 experience and they all died now wasn't that an explosive finish and thanks for sticking with me to the end hopefully i earned your subscription and why not leave a like and comment below and you can catch me tomorrow again see you next time or rather well you'll see me anyway bye bye Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.